8 p.m. Greenwich Meridian time. So uh, very warm welcome everybody uh, to today's webinar on vector symbolic architectures and hyperdimensional computing. And I was just uh, explaining uh, to uh, Tony Plate about my um, uh, my place where I'm uh, where I'm now. So I'm located in Luleå, Sweden, so uh, northern Sweden, and and it's uh, 10 p.m. here. So you you still see that it's very uh, much light. So we never have uh, well we have a sunset. Uh, right after the midnight but then uh, the sunrise follows imme almost immediately after like 30 minutes after that uh, and uh, you know uh, just another day I, I, I had a dream maybe not as prominent as the one of uh, Martin Luther King but uh, well very relevant to our community so I have a dream of inviting you all here one day maybe around this time of, uh, of the year so that you also can um, enjoy the, the settings and uh, maybe we can physically discuss the issues of vector symbolic architectures. That would be great. I would love that. Yes, great. Uh, all, all right. Uh, so today uh, on the menu we have uh, two uh, talks. Uh, so one is given by me. So I will start sharing the screen uh, very, very shortly. And um, uh, the second talk uh, is given by Herr Neubert. Um, so who is also online. Uh, so uh, just to recapitulate the rules, uh, so the speakers uh, will have video on, uh, for others uh, it's optional. Um, the only thing I would like to ask all the uh, participants is to mute uh, their microphones during the presentations. Uh, this is the first thing. And the second thing is that um, uh, if you have questions, please type them uh, into chat. So we will uh, take them uh, by the end of each talk. So the duration of each talk around 20-25 uh, minutes, and then we have uh, uh, a little room for uh, uh, discussions, questions. Uh, those uh, questions which we cannot accommodate during the uh, Q&A session, so you, uh, you are free to post on our mailing list so that uh, the discussion is also available to, uh, to the community. But uh, now I want to my screen. and uh, we'll begin my presentation. Uh, so the topic, uh, the topic for my talk is uh, integer self-organized maps for digital hardware. Um, well, uh, actually I will present uh, technical details of this particular solution uh, towards the end of the presentation. Uh, uh, most of the time I want to um, Stand on motivating um, an importance uh, of one challenge, uh, challenge for, uh, as I think, very um, with a very big impact uh, uh, on the, on the technology, uh, on the AI technology in general. So a challenge for uh, vector symbolic architecture is implementing machine learning. We're working in machine learning tasks, classical machine learning tasks. So this work, um, uh, well, is a, is a compilation of works done um, by a group of people. Uh, so Dennis, who presented uh, during the past seminar, and uh, uh, also our colleagues from La Trobe University uh, in Melbourne, Dustin uh, Da Silva, Namindalka, as well as our colleague from Umeå University here in Sweden. Um, all right, so as I said, so I, I want to spend a substantial amount of time on uh, stating the, the, the problem. And the problem is actually uh, pretty much simple. So uh, in this talk, we will be talking about uh, classical machine learning um, tasks. So where we have uh, input data uh, on which we uh, have to train um, a machine learning model to uh, solve a specific task, a classification task or, well, prediction 
task uh, uh, or other um, typical task for machine learning. And uh, so on the very, very high level of abstraction, uh, so this is, um, uh, this would be a typical pipeline uh, for, um, uh, for this. So you have uh, input data, then, uh, well, using different methods, you, you extract feature vectors, and then these feature vectors uh, uh, go into uh, a specific uh, machine learning solver. Um, so dependent on the um, on the task at hand. So it can be, for example, uh, an artificial neural network of one or another uh, type, uh, or uh, uh, classical ML techniques like uh, KNN, etc. But uh, this talk, uh, well, uh, uh, it's not a surprise. It's also about uh, vector symbolic architectures uh, or hyperdimensional computing, uh, where we have elementary symbols, uh, which are vectors in hyperdimensional space, and uh, we have algebraic operations for manipulating this uh, uh, on these vectors. And then uh, the result of this interpretation uh, of this manipulation is interpreted uh, on the entire vector through a very well-defined uh, similarity metric. And uh, this is um, uh, an attribution of uh, an attribute of, a dis of distributed representation. And actually, the the um, uh, set of algebraic operations is is pretty much uh, simple. So we have. Um, uh, a summation operation which um, uh, has uh, um, uh, which is overloaded with semantic meaning as set operation then we have a binding operation uh, uh, and ordering operation so depending on, um, on which numerical system we use to represent our hyperdimensional vectors so the implementation of these operations can be uh, different but um, in, in essence um, in essence, uh, the, uh, the impact is, uh, is pretty much the same uh, for all numerical systems. So if we would add them uh, together, so uh, how can we implement learning with um, vector symbolic architectures and uh, hyperdimensional computing? Uh, well, looking um, uh, the retrospective, so historically, uh, learning was always uh, a part of the PSA agenda. So uh, mainly, uh, so when talking about learning, so um, many authors, well, starting from Penty, meant um, analogy or similarity-based uh, learning. So uh, using memory, um, well, of different kinds, like uh, smart distributed memory, but. Uh, uh, even in some recent applications, um, uh, a simpler uh, memory models were used. So, uh, basically, a set of uh, a set operation that I uh, introduced previously uh, was used uh, was used to implement a kind of KNN uh, classifier. Well, which is not exactly KNN, but um, uh, the, the effect is pretty much similar to it. Um, and uh, relatively recently, um, I would say over the past maybe five, five to seven years, um, I started to spot more and more articles where BSA uh, is used in, in classical machine learning tasks for classification purposes or for prediction purposes, um, uh, etc. So um, basically, as part of the challenge, uh, here uh, is to uh, is to discover a systematic way of using uh, vector symbolic architectures um, for implementing uh, machine learning uh, solvers or machine learning pipeline uh, pipelines. And um, uh, here I, uh, I I want to highlight uh, basically two parts uh, of uh, of this. So the first part is the data representation part. So uh, we have, on the one hand, we have classical machine learning solvers, like uh, traditional neural network, uh, neural architectures uh, of different kinds, uh, 
uh, recurrent neural networks, um, multi-layer recursive neural etc. Uh, and uh, uh, we can. Uh, I will show you. Uh, I will show you later so that we can uh, get a lot of improvements and a lot of impact by representing uh, features, uh, so the input data, uh, uh, by encoding them into vector symbolic architecture. Um, like structures but uh, uh, this talk is about going uh, um, going all the way using uh, vector symbolic architectures not only representing the the data but also implementing the functionality of the machine learning uh, uh, learning solvers and uh, so during uh, well on the last webinar, so Dennis has presented uh, a case for implementing recurrent neural networks uh, um, using vector symbolic architectures. Today, I will I will show you that uh, self-organized maps um, can be implemented in a pretty much similar way. Uh, but uh, uh, before doing that, I, I want to um, uh, highlight what are the benefits uh, of um, uh, w uh, what we can expect. Uh, by introducing vector symbolic architectures um, uh, as a means for implementing machine learning pipelines. Yes, and by the way, so self-organized maps is, um, uh, very quickly to remind you, it's an artificial neural network for unsupervised learning using competitive principle. So you input um, uh, a feature vector uh, of certain dimensionality and then um, you map them on a on a grid, well, in the classical way, uh, grid of neurons, uh, uh, and the um, uh, weights of each neuron, the dimensionality of the weights is equal to the uh, dimensionality of the uh, input vectors. And then, uh, so you basically um, uh, search for the uh, closest according to uh, to, to selected uh, distance metric node. Uh, and then uh, this node becomes a meaning node, and um, um, in this way, uh, you uh, sort your data out uh, on the grid. And uh, so, uh, self organized maps are um, typically, um, well, their, their typical usage is for uh, exploratory analytics. So, you can uh, basically, uh, you essentially uh, map a high dimensional data on a 2D structure and then uh, so, uh, a certain clustering uh, emerges uh, uh, in a given domain. But um, uh, coming back to the data representation part, um, besides, the, uh, uh, besides the basic operations, algebraic operations on hyperdimensional vectors, so you can, uh, you can uh, use them to represent uh, rather complex data structures. So, um, a simplest of this kind would be uh, an ordered sequence. So, where you uh, where you have uh, three symbols, if they, they are placed in order, uh, then you can use ordering operation uh, to represent uh, position uh, of the specific symbol, and uh, um, and then adding them together would represent the set. But you can also um, uh, implement other more complex data structures, like for example trees or graphs. But what is important is that uh, the result of this iteration is still uh, a flat um, hyperdimensional vector, and hi and in this way uh, um, the complex data structure that you encoded using VSAs becomes uh, pretty much compatible with um, uh, with the uh, uh, with artificial neural networks, so um, um, and uh, you can uh, explore these properties on uh, many mach uh, classical machine learning tasks. So, um, as an example, I, I want to uh, just show you uh, some representative example from um, our our experiments with. Um, uh, natural language processing tasks and uh, uh, where, where we uh, represented n grams using um, uh, vector symbolic architectures 
and then uh, we trained uh, different classical um, uh, machine learning solvers, so to say, to, to um, for classification purposes uh, on a given data set. And then uh, the the well, you can read the result of uh, so the complete. Uh, uh, explanation of the results in this article uh, 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 which I display in the bottom of the slide but the bottom line is that uh, for much in accuracy you can get uh, a very substantial speed up uh, in the training and uh, and test phases as well as you can uh, as well as you can um, uh, reduce memory consumption dramatically which is already very nice properties in the, in our world where where um, machine learning tasks consume a lot of energy, you know, for training and for uh, operations. Uh, then, um, as I said, well, n-grams uh, or using DSAs for uh, implementing n-grams is um, uh, was known since many 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 years ago. So. Uh, but for example, here we, we use this um, approach to test um, uh, to, uh, as an input to self-organized maps. And again, so um, uh, we we see pretty much same effect. Uh, so, uh, uh, so uh, encoding or representing input data using vector symbolic architectures um, allows to achieve much in accuracy, maybe not as high, uh, somewhat reduced, but again, um, this is traded off for um, uh, orders of, uh, in, in, in some cases, orders of magnitude uh, um, uh, gains uh, in, uh, in speed and uh, memory consumption. So here is another use case that we uh, uh, that we have presented uh, last year on a uh, intelligent um, transportation system conference, uh, where we used um, 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 BSA encodings uh, for extremely large data sets. So, um, so uh, we, we consider it a case of. Um, uh, cars um, uh, passing by uh, intersections uh, in uh, uh, in a large Melbourne region. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, at the end, we had we uh, we had a data set with uh, well, now it disappeared from my head, but um, I, I think 200 million uh, records, so indiv uh, uh, in individual passages uh, of cars. Um, I, uh, I'm afraid to to, uh, to lie here, but I mean the details are written in this paper. <clears throat> but what we what we did uh, so we encoded the, the passages uh, of cars through the uh, intersections, which were enumerated, which were given uh, certain IDs, and uh, so we uh, uh, these passages were encoded as um, uh, order is set. And then again, so we, we input it uh, now to, to a more advanced version of self-organized maps, which allowed us to, to trace the, the patterns of traffic development uh, 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 in, a, in a given region, uh, urban region. So very efficiently. So, uh, but now I'm coming to the, to the uh, uh, second part uh, of the um, Machine learning pipeline using VSA. So, um, as I said, uh, so we can achieve definite gains by uh, representing data using um, uh, vector symbolic architectures. But we can further improve the runtime performance if the core of the solver is also implemented using uh, VSA operations. And as I said, so um, during the last webinar, so you. Um, uh, we have seen that um, a random vector functional link network can be implemented uh, uh, using uh, VCA operations. Now, I want to, to show you that uh, uh, even self-organized maps uh, can be implemented uh, in this way. In this way, uh, and this work uh, has um, uh, has its uh, starting point. Uh, so we search for. Um, efficient binary implementations of self-organized maps, and apparently we found um, um, 
probably the only implementation which was uh, from 2009 and 2011, uh, which is um, uh, which is named tree state zone, uh, self-organized maps. So and uh, it was dedicated for implementation on FPGA and working with binary feature vectors. So not uh, so no connection to VSA's representation. Just uh, well, uh, as you know, in many machine learning tasks, uh, binary feature vectors is um, it's quite a usual phenomenon. Uh, so and then. Uh, well, basically, I will not go into details of this tree sum uh, or tree state sum uh, uh, architecture. Uh, the only thing is that uh, so the weights uh, of each neuron in sum uh, they uh, they can have uh, three values: so zero, one, or not defined, so hash uh, hash value. And then they define the update rules. Well, again, so it, it is listed here, but maybe it's uh, due to the uh, time limits. It's uh, I will not go into detail explaining what is what. But uh, what is important is that for us, when we, uh, when we search for, for this kind of binary implementation, from our perspective, from a perspective of working um, with uh, BSAs, uh, we saw that um, this implementation can, uh, can be generalized in a way that, well, instead of using this kind of not very natural numerical system with the zero, one, and, and a hash symbol, we can use the balanced. Uh, we can use the balanced uh, ternary system, for example, with minus one, zero, and one, uh, and then all the updates, all the updates, uh, they can be um, uh, implemented uh, using st uh, pretty much standard uh, VSA operations, and then further, uh, further on. So, um, so if we could implement. Um, uh, well, in this case, three uh, three state uh, some uh, using ternary uh, numerical system. Why not to 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 implement it using um, carry uh, um, numerical system, where the values uh, in each neuron uh, basically um, the the value of each weight can can vary between minus k and k, and uh, in this case. Uh, so we uh, uh, we introduce the update functionality, which uh, 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 which is using um, uh, a clipping function, which was introduced um, uh, on the last webinar. So as a result, as a result, we uh, implemented um, self-organized maps using uh, uh, standard VSA operations, um, and. Uh, 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 at the end, we we obtain an implementation which works purely with uh, with integer weights uh, in the range of minus k and k. And uh, so, well, um, uh, these performance results on the on the left, they are shown for um, a simple data set. But uh, the important thing is that uh, so the VSA realization of uh, self-organized maps. Um, achieve uh, much in performance, but uh, and again, it's uh, it's very compatible with uh, uh, traditional digital hardware as well as uh, upcoming um, uh, dedicated hardware for uh, VSA implementation. So I want to um, conclude my talks, um, um, stating again the importance uh, and a great potential uh, for vector symbolic architectures to implement functionality of classical machine learning solvers. Um, here we can trade off accuracy for speed up and memory efficiency, but this is extremely important uh, in uh, uh, use cases where you need to implement uh, mach uh, machine learning techniques on embedded devices with limited uh, computational resources. So. Um, and uh, so we have uh, tried uh, implementation on, on selected uh, neural architectures, but again, uh, so uh, I, the challenge is to uh, come up with new VSA uh, neural algorithms. And by this, I want to uh, to conclude my talk. Thank you. So. Let me see. So I stop sharing. So and uh, check the chat. Okay. So.
uh, that was the question about okay so the, um, any questions Well, uh, in this case, uh, if you have any questions, so please, uh, well, uh, write me a message. Uh, but uh, I, now we can switch to Harry. Ah, okay. So we have we have some questions here. Um, uh, question from Tony: The FPGA implementation is very interesting. Have you seen any new efforts on that? Um, uh, uh, do you mean, uh, uh, well, if you mean uh, FPGA implementation of BSAs, um, not much, except for uh, our own uh, uh, our own exercise of implementing uh, randomly connected uh, network, uh, recu uh, recurrent neural networks on FPGAs, that we did. Um, if you want to know the, the details, uh, well, uh, first it was described last time, and then uh, you can write to me, I can send you a, a reference. But uh, not much more than that. Uh, then, of course, uh, uh, so the, um, the works uh, of um, uh, Abbas Rahimi, uh, so he um, uh, uh, definitely did implementations of uh, VSAs on FPGAs. So that, um, uh, so if you, if you check his recent uh, Publication, so you can find the references on the, on the FPGA implementations as well. 